Jim Hebel with Bedecker Plastics. Today I want to cover the DMA curve as a tool for helping you to understand the ability for a plastic to maintain its strength and stiffness with temperature. In past videos I covered the heat deflection temperature, the continuous use temperature of a plastic, both as ways to understand the temperature limitations of a polymer material. However, those are essentially single data points. The DMA curve, or the Dynamic Mechanical Analysis, provides a much more comprehensive understanding of a material's performance across a wide temperature range. Using the information obtained from a DMA can be invaluable to a person selecting the right polymer for use in their application. I will caution you that learning all the details of a DMA analysis can be extremely overwhelming. I want to hit the high points in this video as a way to give you a little bit of an understanding. But one can gain a much deeper understanding if they wish to dive in deeper and do some of their own additional research. Here I'm holding a test sample for a three-point bending DMA. It's amazing what we can learn from this small piece of plastic. Let's head over to the computer screen and I'll show you a few DMA curves and explain the basics of the test and the information generated. Let's take a look at the DMA. The dynamic mechanical analysis. So the first chart here you'll see is a typical DMA for a cast nylon and you immediately see that you're looking at the dynamic modulus on the vertical axis uh, versus temperature on the horizontal axis. And what you see is that this is not just one point in time. You're looking at an entire range of properties with temperature. So you're looking at stiffness with temperature. And you can see for this cast nylon at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees Fahrenheit, you start to lose stiffness of the material as it softens with temperature. This is much more than you can take away from just looking at a data sheet for this material. A data sheet is going to give you a series of properties that are just sort of one point in time. Uh, tensile strength, compressive strength, flex strength, uh, those are just single points at 73 degrees Fahrenheit, say, lab environment. Whereas the DMA gives you a look at the physical property of the material across a larger temperature range. So it can give you some very valuable information and a bit more of an insight to the performance of the material. So what is the DMA? Um, how is it used? It, it's a test that's used to characterize materials and specifically it characterizes the behavior of a polymer. It's used to study the viscoelastic behavior of polymers. What does that mean? Basically means that polymers depending on temperature can behave differently. Uh, they tend to behave a little bit like a solid in certain situations and they tend to behave a little bit like a uh, a liquid in certain situations. So they're both visco and elastic, viscoelastic behaviors. And again, that's dependent on the temperature as to how the material behaves. So the way the test works is you see a little diagram there in the center. I showed you this test sample earlier, uh, which is right here. And we use a three point bending test, typically for thermoplastic materials, where you hold the material on the ends and you apply the load in the center, which is an oscillating load uh, or a sinusoidal load. And basically you're measuring the response of the material under that fluctuating load. And the response is the strain that you're measuring. And you get a whole lot of information, which you see on the slide here. Um, but uh, I'm not gonna go into detail on all that, but you can imagine with this dynamic test, you're getting a lot of information. For comparison, you can see this is a typical um, ASTM type one test bar, tensile bar. And so you can see the size of that compared to the size of this test bar that's used for the DMA test. Um, and again, the DMA test uh, that we typically refer to for thermoplastic materials, uh, oftentimes the three point bending test is used. Um, but you can see there's several different types of tests uh, methods for DMA. There's things, uh, there's methods like the shear, the dual cantilever, the single cantilever, the compression. Um, there's many different types. But the three-point bending is, is, as I said, the most common for thermoplastic materials. And as I said, as you apply that load to the center of the test bar, 
um, there's variables uh, that come into play. And one of those variables is the temperature inside the chamber is varied. So you can measure the resulting curve uh, performance of the material with, with temperature change. Now, um, the way the test actually looks, the first uh, little diagram here shows you the stress that's being applied in the sinusoidal uh, nature. So you're getting some deformation with that stress. The responsive strain is then uh, plotted as well. And what's interesting is the DMA looks at uh, that difference between the stress being applied and the resulting strain. And they look to see if they're in phase or not. There's a resulting phase angle or a phase shift. And depending on the nature of the polymer, depending on the temperature, uh, depending on the time, uh, that phase angle will, will, will move. And that'll give you some insight as to what's happening with the stiffness of the material with temperature. Here's an example of a couple different scenarios. You can have a phase angle of zero degrees. So uh, the strain or the response is right in line with the, uh, the load that's being applied. And that's a purely elastic response. That's the response of a typical solid. You apply a load, you get a response. You take the load away and the, the material uh, rebounds. So it's got recoverable deformation. You can have a phase angle of 90 degrees, okay? And that type of response is a purely viscous response. That's the response of a material that behaves like water, like a liquid. You put a load on a liquid and the liquid simply moves. It doesn't come back. So it experiences permanent deformation. The beauty of a polymer, again, depending on temperature, you can have an elastic response and you can have a response which is more viscous, hence the, the viscoelastic response. So you have varying phase angles anywhere between zero and 90 degrees, depending on the conditions. And those conditions oftentimes meaning temperature and time as well. Now, when you run this test and you put this plastic under that uh, oscillating load, this is the type of raw data that you basically get. It might look something like this. And you'll have a stiffness curve or modulus curve. Um, right here, the storage modulus, the blue curve, that's the curve that's showing you the elastic response for that particular test. And then you also get a stiffness curve or a modulus curve uh, for the viscous component. So those two definitions, the storage modulus is the blue line and that's your elastic modulus. And then you have the loss modulus, which is your viscous modulus. And sometimes you see them referred to as E prime or E double prime. And again, without going into too much detail on you know, the definition of those, essentially what you're seeing is the stiffness of the material. And you're seeing the stiffness of the material start to drop off with temperature. Now that phase angle that I talked about, the phase angle is simply a ratio uh, between those two modulus curves. So it's a measurement of how soft the material is getting, if you will, the material's ability to dampen vibration um, and what you see is the ratio uh, as those two curves start to intersect with one another, another, those two modulus curves, your tan delta curve peaks, okay? Your tan delta gets at the highest point. And at that highest point, that's the glass transition temperature of the material. In effect, it's the point at which the material has become soft enough that it's very flexible and rubbery if you will. And you can take all this raw data and it looks a bit confusing, but essentially you can boil it down into a simple DMA curve showing the overall stiffness of the material with temperature. And as you see the material start to get soft and rubbery, you go from that room temperature, glassy, solid, rigid stage you enter that glass transition where the material starts to soften such that the material, uh, the polymer starts to be able to move. 
um, and that's where you get the, that softening of the material until you hit the rubbery plateau. At the rubbery plateau, that's where you enter the area of permanent deformation. And that's very time dependent as well. So not just associated with temperature, but it's temperature and time under load. Uh, at this point, the material uh, is now experiencing permanent deformation in those situations. And then you continue to raise temperature, you actually enter the melt or the liquid flow region where the, uh, where the material behaves fully like, like a liquid. Now, a typical DMA for two curves. Uh, I wanted to show you this. Uh, first curve, the lower one here, polyether imid, also known as Ultem 1000, a common thermoplastic material. This is an amorphous thermoplastic, and amorphous thermoplastics uh, behave just like this. They have a very gradual softening temperature. Compared to peak polyether ether ketone, uh, this is a virgin grade of peak, what you see is the material does start to soften with temperature. You lose stiffness, but then you have this sharper drop off. And what's interesting, uh, by looking at the DMA, I can see that at room temperature, peak is a stronger, stiffer, uh, more stable material. However, as temperature increases, in the higher temperature regions, actually polyether imid has higher stiffness and in turn higher strength and better stability actually in that little bit higher temperature range. So you can see quickly how you can almost fingerprint the performance of the material with temperature just by simply looking at the DMA. Another curve that uh, I wanted to show is just the effect of putting glass fiber into the material. This is the DMA curves for a virgin peak material with uh, no fillers compared to the DMA for a 30% uh, carbon fiber filled uh, material. And you can see with the fiber filler in there holding the polymer together, you get much higher stiffness. And again, in turn, you can interpret that to mean you're going to have higher strength, you're going to have more stability with temperature. Uh, the polymer, the base polymer still starts to yield at about the same temperature. Um, but you maintain uh, a higher level of stiffness because the, poly the, the fibers help hold that, uh, that polymer together. So certainly interesting that we can get that kind of information from a DMA. So as far as the DMA goes, I just love it um, because it's just a great reference tool. It's, it's a dynamic reference tool and it gives you a snapshot or a fingerprint of the performance of a material across that wide temperature range. So certainly a handy tool. Thanks for tuning in to this brief overview of the DMA curve. Be sure to ask your plastic supplier to provide you DMA data, which will help you choose the right material for your application. Thanks for watching. Contact us with your plastic or composite sheet, rod, tube, or custom profile requirements. Give us a call. Quotes are free. We look forward to hearing from you.